Hello everyone! Today is going to be another pattern tutorial. I absolutely adore steampunk fashion. So when I saw this pattern, it was definitely giving me those steampunk vibes. This is the first time I am actually using a McCall's pattern, which is pretty exciting because they have a lot of really great cosplay patterns in their inventory. Any pattern that has a small amount of pieces are usually easier to do. This is an easy piece to make to add to your steampunk wardrobe. I'm going to be using a McCall's skirt pattern, number 7439, and I'm going to do view C. I will be making my skirt in a size 22 that goes with my waist measurement. The pattern will also tell you the suggested fabrics that you should be using to make this skirt. I will be needing two and a half yards of fabric. I will also be needing a seven inch zipper, a hook and eye, and four half inch buttons. The last part of the pattern that we need to look at is which pattern pieces we are going to cut out. So we will need all the ones for view C, which is number one, two, seven, and eight. All of the embellishments that I'm using are going to be in an antique gold, which I think look really nice against the brown. Remember, you always want to measure yourself because sizes on these sewing patterns are always going to be different than the ready to wear sizes. Here I've just traced out my pattern pieces so I don't have to cut my original pattern so they last longer. So here are the four pattern pieces that I will need. We're going to start with our brown fabric and we're going to cut out all of our pattern pieces. Each piece in the pattern should indicate how much you should cut out and it will specify also if it needs to be placed on the center fold. So go ahead and pin down your pieces and cut them out. Make sure to put marks for all your dots and to make tiny slits for all your notches. You're also going to cut out your interfacing piece for the waistband. We're going to start by taking your numbers 1 and 2 and we're going to line up the edges to sew the main body of your skirt together. Sew that together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then we're going to grab our open edges which will be your back seam and go ahead and place a pin where your pattern indicates. This will be where you're going to stop sewing. Sew this again with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then we're going to grab our iron and you're going to iron open your side seams. And then we're going to do a two line base stitch across the top of our skirt. Pull out some thread so you have about a 3 or 4 inch tail and you're going to start your first basting stitch at 1 16th inch seam allowance. Then you're going to go around again with a 3 8 inch seam allowance making sure to leave tails at the beginning and end of your stitch. We're going to start gathering our skirt so you're going to grab the top two threads and you're going to gently pull and your skirt will instantly start to gather. So just guide the gathers down all the way through the top of your skirt. We're going to grab our waistband piece, making sure to mark where the squares are on our pattern, as well as the X's for our buttons. You're going to start with the front piece of your waistband and we're going to iron on the inner facing onto the back side of your waistband or the side that doesn't have all your marks on it. We're going to add the waistband to the top edge of your gathered skirt and then you're just going to move the gathers around till they're evenly distributed. We're going to sew this on with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. We're going to iron the seam toward the top of the waistband.
Go ahead and line up the back seam of your skirt and we're going to sew this close with a base stitch using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Go ahead and iron this seam open. I'm going to use my waistband pattern piece to place my marks where the zipper is going to go. Go ahead and grab your zipper and we're going to pin this on and then you want the silver notches on your zipper to line up with the dots that you've marked. You only want to pin the zipper to the seam, you don't want to pin it to the whole skirt. So we're first going to sew the zipper down onto the seam by sewing in the middle of each side of the zipper. Then once that's tacked down, we're going to open up the skirt and then we're going to go back over the same stitches, sewing through the skirt so you can see the stitches on the outside. This is when you will stitch across the bottom as well. Go ahead and take a seam ripper and open up that base stitch that we sewed earlier. We're going to go to the waistband and we're going to add our buttons. You're going to grab a needle and some thread and you're going to sew on each button where the four X's are on the front of your waistband. So you should have something like this so far. We're going to take the second piece of our waistband and we're going to lay it over the top of the outside and we're going to pin the top of this waistband down. Sew this together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. We're going to add little tiny slits to the top of our seam just where the curve is. Take your iron and you're going to fold over the bottom seam 3 8 inches and iron it down. Then you're going to iron the inside seam toward the center of your inner facing. Then you're going to fold your waistband over and we're going to pin this down. On the edge of the waistband we just pinned down, you're going to fold in the edge 5 eighths of an inch and iron that down. It should line up with the edge of the zipper and then you can pin this down as well. And then go ahead and do this to the other side. Once again you're going to grab your needle and thread and we're going to go ahead and do a slip stitch or a ladder stitch to sew the waistband down. Go ahead and start at the top corner of your waistband and you're going to start working your way down the short side. Once you get to that little metal notch in your zipper, you're going to start sewing onto the zipper instead of the fabric and you're going to continue this to that bottom corner. And then once you get to that corner, just switch directions and continue your slip stitch doing the same thing when you reach the other side. We're going to grab our number 8 ruffle pieces. We're going to open them up and pin the sides of each piece together. So you should have one large rectangle. Sew this with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then you can iron open the seams. For the bottom of the ruffle, we're going to fold it over 3 8 inches and iron it down. Sew 
sew this with a 1 16th inch seam allowance. Fold over and iron down another 3 8 inches. And then sew this down with a 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. We're going to work on the top of our ruffle and add two lines of base stitches. The first one's going to be a 1 16th inch seam allowance. Make sure that you leave a 3 to 4 inch tail of thread at the beginning and end of your stitch. Do the same thing with the second base stitch at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. We're doing the same thing that we did with the skirt. Once again, you're going to grab the top two threads and gently pull so that it gathers your ruffle. You're going to take the top part of your skirt that is right side out and you're going to put it into your ruffle that is wrong side out. So the nice sides should be sandwiched together. Go ahead and line up one of the seams of your ruffle with the back seam of your skirt. Then you can adjust the gathers of your ruffle to make sure it fits the bottom of that top skirt edge and you're going to pin this together. Sew this on with a half inch seam allowance. And your skirt is almost done. We're going to add our embellishments. So I'm using a jewelry chain and you're going to grab your pliers and I'm just measuring out five or so inches of chain. I didn't have any jump rings for this project so I'm just using a larger chain but the jump rings will definitely work a lot easier than these do. These were a little awkward to work with and they barely fit through the buttonhole so a jump ring will definitely be a lot easier. So I'm just adding one of the larger chains and I'm using that to attach the smaller one. to add a large one on the other side the same exact way and then I'm going to add the smaller one to that making sure my chain is flat and go ahead and do this to the bottom as well I'm going to add my connecting chain that has a little clasp at the end and then I'm going to open the clasp and add the key The last thing we're going to do is add our hook and eye, so at the very top of our waistband. I'm going to use my needle and thread and sew on the hook on one side and then the eye on the other. And you're just going to sew this on like you were to sew on a button. And that's it. Your skirt is done and you have an awesome steampunk skirt. This skirt pairs perfectly with the blouse that I made from the simplicity pattern last tutorial. 
I will link that down below for you if you haven't watched it yet. This skirt was really easy to make. This is definitely a beginner pattern and you can definitely finish this skirt in one day. This skirt does also have some really good basics that you're going to learn. For example, adding a zipper and making a ruffle. I feel like with the petticoat it makes the skirt lay a little better and fit a little better around my waist. You can also easily modify the skirt by making the waistband straight all the way around instead of having that curve in the front, which I kind of wish I did. So whether this is your first time making a pattern or you're looking for a little steampunk inspiration, I hope this video helped you. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!